Hi, everyone. Welcome to the C60 show, where we show you how to optimize your health with carbon 60. Hi, I'm Ken. I'm a research scientist and founder of C60 Purple Power. And I'm here to explain the science of C60 to you and uh, show you how it works at the cellular level to give you back control over your health. And I'm Sierra, I'm a health coach. And today we're gonna get right down to the heart of the matter and talk about the cardiovascular system. Yes, and actually it is Heart Awareness Month in February. Oh, that's so cute. I see what they did there. It's Valentine's Day month as well. So it makes sense to focus on the heart. So Ken and I got together last week to research this topic and really dig into the science. Uh, and, you know, my mind was absolutely blown by the by how C60 can actually help the cardiovascular system. And I think your mind is going to be blown too as well today. So stick <laughs> around. Uh, today, we're going to go over the number one cause of cardiovascular disease. And I bet you can't guess what it is. I was actually really shocked. Mm. Um, you might think you know what it is. And if you do, let us know in the chat in the comments right now. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we'd like to see your guess. Well, and, then, and then number two, of course, we're going to talk about C60 and how it can yes. help. It's really, really good news. So, Okay, well, let's uh, get to it here. I think we have our little disclaimer. Yes, we do. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And just so you know, we have an alarm uh, in our building that's supposed to go off. <laughs> so it might happen. And if it does, we'll just yes. have to figure out what to do at that point. But um, hopefully we'll get lucky. The following statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Individual results may vary. Yes, the statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administrations. Oh, that's the same one. <laughs> All opinions expressed All on our show today are for informational purposes only. Yes, and, uh, and are not a substitute for professional medical advice. Please seek advice from your doctor or other qualified health professional. Yes, so today we're gonna to talk about the cardiovascular system. So what is the cardiovascular system? Well, we know it's it's made up of the heart, which is a muscular, the pumping device in our chest. And it's also a closed system of vessels called, called arteries and veins and capillaries. And I just blew it because oh. I just gave away the secret. Yes. But I wanted to ask you guys what you thought. Well, maybe you already put your guesses in the chat, what you thought the the cause of, you know, cardiovascular disease was the number one cause, and it is inflammation. That is the real cause of heart attacks. I thought that was really interesting. It's rampant inflammation that causes heart attacks, not high cholesterol. In, in fact, more than half of heart attacks occur in people who have had normal cholesterol levels. And uh, many of these people, you know, are taking their cholesterol medications, but uh, still doing things that contribute to inflammation. Yeah, which is, we know, of course, is the wrong foods, overstressing too much, sitting around, not enough exercise, and accumulating uh, ever more belly fat. Now, if you're wondering if you have inflammation, it's not something that's always easy to tell if you do, um, but you can ask your daughter, doctor, uh, especially if you're having cardiovascular trouble, you can ask your doctor to do a test for the um, C-reactive yep. protein um, which is an inflammatory marker? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty standard in most blood tests that they'll that they'll give you. So it's a, it just tells you how much inflammation is happening in your arteries. Yes, which can mean a higher risk for heart attacks. You want to look at that. Okay, these are the the things that uh, that can cause heart attacks. And I mean, most people know heart disease factors like this. Obviously, smoking that's just that's the hugest one of all. It just it causes so much damage. Uh, of course, there's genetic predisposition. Those are uh, that's a, obviously one. We have a sedentary lifestyle. You know, especially lately, a lot of people just mm -hmm. staying in, not getting out. I mean, getting exercise is really good. Uh, there's various infections that can happen, and that's so sometimes infections of the heart, which cause inflammation in the heart or the arteries. Uh, so, yeah, if you notice, all of these disease factors do one thing, and that is they all cause inflammation. Yes, and also alcohol. There is the one there. Unhealthy foods, especially those fatty foods and those really sugary foods. You might not think like a really sugary food is a cause, but it causes inflammation, and that, uh, oh, yeah. uh, that adds to it. And then obesity for obvious reasons, and also because... Uh, fat produces a whole bunch of hormones and other substances which can cause inflammation. Absolutely. And then, of course, the stress, which is if you're under acute mm -hmm. stress, then you have problems. And anxiety, yeah. Um, so, I mean, one thing that you can do is 
eat an anti-inflammatory diet. So the Mediterranean diet is a really good example of an anti-inflammatory diet uh, because it is, you know, it still has the same amount of cholesterol, but it it's not the kind of cholesterol that oxidizes. Do you want to explain that? Ken? Yeah, because these, yeah, these are all, well, it's, uh, well, first off, you don't, all these foods are healthy for you. You've got the like that we don't have the, the balance of fats. That's the main one that we get. You know, if you're eating a balance of omega threes to omega sixes, they're an easy balance. Also, you know, you have the green leafy vegetables. That's giving you vitamin K and various lutens and uh, flavonoids, which also are antioxidant. And just just the, and you know, and these <laughs> they're basically living healthy foods, which is the key part of this. And that that's the key. You said it right there when you said antioxidants is that they're eating foods that are high in antioxidants. And that's why their diet is considered so healthy and, and anti-inflammatory. Um, but yeah, let's go back to this picture. Of the yeah. Arteries. And this, this is a, uh, this is a little picture of a, of basically plaques in arteries. And we need to talk about how this actually happens. And what it is, is they, they talk about LDL cholesterol being the bad cholesterol, but it's not the LDL cholesterol, it's oxidized LDL cholesterol. And when LDL cholesterol oxidizes, it, it has a habit of sticking to the surfaces of the arteries. And then of course the immune system sees that oxidized LDL is a bad thing and it goes after it and that causes inflammation. And then part of the body protecting itself, it actually calcium in your blood will actually deposit onto those plaques because the plaque is just like a fatty substance, but then they get calcified and they become really, really hard. And then this process repeats itself and repeats itself. And so finally you get areas of blockage as it's kind of shown in this, uh, in this diagram where, you know, the blood can't flow and then you have a heart attack. So that's, that's, and it's of course all caused by inflammation. Yeah. And I think that you mentioned that the, the arteries themselves get attacked by the inflammation. Yeah, well, exactly. Right? Yeah. Cause it's because the LDL cholesterol, oxidized LDL cholesterol oh, okay. is unnatural. The body sees that as a foreign invader and attacks it. So you're getting inflammation, you're getting the plaques and then the body kind of one way the body protects from the, in, from the attacks is it calcifies it, you know, puts a calcium right, layer right. over it. Then the, then the immune system doesn't see it as an enemy, but then, and then there's another layer of, of like, oxidized LDL and it kind of builds up, you know, in layers like a tree. But I also remember you mentioning that it's when the LDL sticks around for a long time that oh. it becomes oxidized. Yes. So what can the pregnenolone? Well, we're, we're going to get yeah. to that a little bit okay. later in the show when we talk how C60 can help uh, right. prevent some of this. Stuff. Okay, good, good, good. I'm glad. Now, I just want to go back to this Mediterranean diet really quickly because there's an interesting study that we found that showed that people eating the Mediterranean diet compared to people that weren't, their cholesterol levels were just as high as the people that weren't, but they didn't have uh, the same heart Yeah, they had much lower. Yeah, they had yeah. the same LDL cholesterol levels but they, uh, they didn't have the heart attacks. And of course, one of the things was that the Mediterranean diet is anti-inflammatory. Yes. It has a lot of ox antioxidants. antioxidants in it. So the LDL cholesterol that was in their bloodstream wasn't being oxidized and, uh, and therefore it wasn't making plaque. So it's not the LDL cholesterol that's bad. It's the oxidized LDL cholesterol, which is caused of course by inflammation, which is also caused by the bad diet. So all that comes together to make a problem. And let's talk about some of the uh, diseases that can help the heart. Now, one yeah, because we, we just talked about the arteries, uh, how the inflammation can kind of attack that, but inflammation can also attack the heart muscle itself, right? Yeah, well, that's part of that thing is, is as you get older, there's a lot less antioxidants in your cells. And especially if your heart has to work over, let's say you're obese or something is working overtime, what happens is the cells in the mitochondria, in the cells there's mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouse of the cell. And they produce, they produce like 65% or even more of the oxidative radicals you're gonna have in your cell. But what happens if you don't have enough antioxidants to neutralize those reactive oxidative species, they're gonna go out and they actually do a cross link of proteins which is like, this is an example of a protein. You can kind of see its background. It's very complicated. And what happens is the oxidative radical. Long chain yeah, exactly. amino acids. Yes, yeah. it's, it's even more complicated than looking at what happens is you do oxidative damage on that. And then the, the, those little hangers out you see there will cross link. That means they'll stick together because one was oxidized. So now it's got an active site and it bends over and sticks to another one. Well, the problem when that happens is now the proteins changed and the body will actually recognize it or see it as a foreign 
foreign substance because it's 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 wow. been modified by the oxidative radicals. Right. So, so now, it's an invader. Yeah, exactly. So now it's uh, it will attack the heart muscle. And if we go back to the previous slide. We can see see there, and there's various ways of doing this. You have like myocarditis carditis, which is uh, the inflammation of the heart muscle, and that's when the actual you know, because of those those cross-linked proteins, which are now rec recognized, the body sees as foreign, it's actually attacking the heart muscle. And of course, what happens is you got different uh, things you can get below. You can get uh, you can get thickened heart muscle, which means it's scarring tissue. So it's it's thicker, but it doesn't pump as much, which is a real problem. So you're and that's congestive heart failure kind of stuff. Now, I know it's something interesting you said was that as the you know because as you said our production of antioxidants decline as we age. So what happens is the mitochondria are producing all these oxidative radicals and we're not able to keep up with them. Um, and then here's the other thing is that when, you're, when your arteries get constricted, your mitochondria has to work harder. Your heart has yeah. to work harder. And so then it produces more oxidative radicals and it's this kind of cascading yeah, which, effect. Yes, and they produce more cross linked proteins, which causes more inflammation. And what did you say? The, the vicious cycle. Yeah. And so just one thing after another, yes. after another. It's a feedback loop. They just... It, the whole yeah. process makes it worse. Yeah, so. and, there, and there's other ways. Sometimes you can get like a, a larger, a weakened heart muscle uh, and you get your large ventricles, and then, of course, it just can't pump because it's not strong enough. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of this. But it all starts with inflammation, and like a, it's sort of like you could call it almost an autoimmune situation here. Right. Being caused by, well, either in the, in the arteries, it's the, it's the LDL cholesterol, which is being cross-linked and then is attacked by the immune system, or it's the cross-linked proteins in the heart muscle, which is then attacked. And, and you got to also wonder like how many other autoimmune diseases are actually caused by this kind of situation yeah. in organs that are not even related to the circulatory system. The more I learn about autoimmune diseases, the more I learn that they are synonymous with inflammation. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, yeah. That's something to definitely keep in check. And let's talk, this is another thing that people often overlook, and that is poor dental health. You really need to go visit your dentist because if you have periodontal disease, as I call it, you have you know bacteria in your mouth and that bacteria will get into your bloodstream. And of course that will cause the immune system to attack arteries attack. Of course, it can cause inflammations. It's in your bloodstream, right? They can, the you know, bacteria can colonize the, the uh, plaques and then the immune system attacks the plaques, which causes more inflammation. So it's really, really important to have good dental health. So you need to go into your dentist, get your teeth clean, have it looked at that. If you've got periodontal disease, there are things he can do that can help you. And um, yeah, and if you have any health issues, it's really important, especially serious ones, you need to consult with, you know, your medical professional in that area. I'd like to say one thing about that, because I know that people are afraid of bacteria in their mouth, but there's good bacteria too. So you don't necessarily just want to switch Listerine around there and kill all the good bacteria, yeah. because it's important that you have that. Yeah, well. that's one of the things people say, they tell you, oh, take a, take a uh, what do you call that, a mouthwash. Yeah. No, what happens is you kill off all the bacteria, yes. and the bad ones, grow faster than the good ones so you end up having just like a bad you need a healthy ecosystem in your mouth and uh and poisoning wiping clear cutting it every day with mouthwash is not the way to go yeah good breath starts with good gut health okay mm -hmm. so it all starts in the gut but another thing is try to avoid fluoride toothpaste because that just that will screw up of course the thyroid, the thyroid system because yeah. you know Fluoride is in the same family as iodine. So if your body's flooded with fluoride, you're going to get damaged uh, T3 and T4. So and it's going to interfere with the receptors for the iodine. And so even if you have lots of iodine in your body, it's not going to be able to yeah. absorb it. We talked about that in our last yes, show. Yes, we so. did. <laughs> but let's talk about some things that we can actually do to, uh, to help you with this. Yes. I always love to get to this part. But really, the bottom line is if you want to keep your heart healthy and prevent a heart attack, you need to protect your arteries from inflammation and also your heart muscle, right? Um, but unfortunately, and this is what the doctors have discovered, is that anti-inflammatory drugs just are not a viable treatment because long-term they interfere with the body's signaling molecules and will actually do more damage than good. And this is also true with a lot of times with your, like if you got the vitamin E or vitamin D, if you take too much of those, those vitamins, those antioxidants, vitamins will mess with the reactive oxidative species, which your body uses as signal molecules, like the nitrogen oxides, uh, 
And also so there's other ones based on iron, sulfur, and zinc. These are low energy oxidative radicals. And the body's been using them for, you know, ever, the cells have for, uh, for signaling molecules. Right. But let's talk about some of the things we can do yes. with this. There are some good things we can do. So C60 supports cardiovascular health in three main ways. We're going to go to these one by one, but I just want to reiterate, we talked about antioxidants. Yes, you can get them from your food. Not all of them come from your food. Some of them your body has to make. So, uh, but the thing about C60, and this isn't in the topics that we're actually going <laughs> to go over, but the thing about C60 is your C60 is actually able to replace some of these antioxidants yes. that your body makes. So, do you want to just explain that really quick yes. before we go into this? Yes. Yeah, so well, one of the what's okay. what's Put the, first one. Put the first yeah, one up. Yeah, that fights, fights inflammation. inflammation. This okay. is the key. <laughs> now, yeah, I mean, you have to eat like a, they showed in the Mediterranean diet, healthy diet. You're, you you want to, you know, it's C60 or anything else isn't going to help you if you don't actually make an effort to, you know, have a healthy diet, get the exercise, the sleep, all those things necessary for health. I mean, that's the key. But when you what we, we come to C60, what we're talking about, C60 is pretty unique in its in its manner because it's uh, not only, especially in the mitochondria, where 65% of all the, uh, the antioxidants, antioxidants or the oxidative stress is made, but uh, C60 only reacts with high energy oxidative radicals. That means like super oxygen, hydroxyl radical or ion, and perhaps peroxy nitrate. And C60 doesn't interact with any of the signaling molecules. That's the nitrogen oxides or the ones based on sulfur, iron, or zinc that your body uses as signaling reactive oxidative species, species signaling molecules. So then and they've done in, in scientific studies, they've given animals 10,000 times what a person might be taking and there was no ill effects. And I think you can link to it in uh, on our website and they can just that check out that study. And the reason is because C60 is only interacting with those high energy oxidative radicals, which aren't used by the body as signaling molecules. And whereas if you tried to take like vitamin E or vitamin D or some other antioxidant at 10,000 times what the quote recommended level is, they would probably be fatal to you. So that's one of the secrets of C60's uh, um, amazing health benefits. Well, and there's another question I have because I'm just getting some clarity here. So the mitochondria though, when it produces oxidative radicals, it uses very specific antioxidants to fight those radicals, right? Yes. And those are not, those do not come from food. Yes, that's right. Those have to, yeah, that's basically we're looking at the, the, in the mitochondria, it's the powerhouse, the cell makes the ATP, all the energy that your uh, body needs. And one of the, uh, and, and that's, of course, where 65% of the oxidative radicals are made, especially if you're exercising a lot, even more. And one of the things that makes us take super oxygen, which is an oxygen with an extra electron, and then there's SOD, superoxide dismutase, which neutralizes that, to hydrogen peroxide, which then catalase comes in and neutralizes that to water and back to an oxygen. Now, you you can't take a supplement for that, no. and it won't do it. And so you have to manufacture that. The best you can do is take, you know, the precursors and hope for that. But when you take C60, C60 goes into, is aptly uptaken by the mitochondria, shown in scientific studies, and it neutralizes superoxygen. So you don't even get the hydrogen peroxide. So actually catalase levels rise in your uh, body because it's not being used as much because you know C60 can actually take a super oxygen, pull the electron off, neutralize it with one of the, uh, we've talked about the chemistry with one of the uh, hydrogen ions that stores inside of its little cage-like structure. And then the oxygen goes directly back to, well, it goes back to an oxygen without ever going through the process of turning hydrogen peroxide and then back into a water and oxygen. So that is another thing that makes C60 unique is that it resets itself again and again. Normally like vitamin C or other antioxidants, they just get spent. I mean, they once they, you know, bind with a free radical, they're done. Uh, and then the other thing is C60 is almost 200 times more powerful than your conventional antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E. And it, like he said, doesn't interfere yeah. with the... Well, the key is C60 molecules. can reset itself. That's its key. Because it, in the mitochondria, it actually will go to the outer side of the mitochondria. Let's put up the next uh, Mitochondria. It, it, will actually, uh, it will actually go to the outside of the outer membrane of the mitochondria is positively charged. It's got lots of hydrogen protein. C60 fills up like six hydrogen proteins on the inside of it. Then it travels toward the inner membrane of the mitochondria, which is negatively charged. And along the way, it runs into things like super oxygen, which it neutralizes back to oxygen. And then when it gets runs out of its hydrogen ions inside by neutralizing oxidative radicals, the, those oxidative radicals will stick to it, making it 
negatively charged, and then it travels back to the positively charged membrane where it reloads up with hydrogen ions and it goes back and forth like a little billiard ball, neutralizing the oxidative radicals. So your oxidative radicals go way down, especially when you're exercising. And that's why people can exercise longer. They don't get lactic acid buildup. That's just, and they don't get DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, because the oxidative radicals being produced by your mitochondria are being neutralized by the C60. And that's its, its really way it supports mitochondria. C60 also enhances stem cell production. And this is huge because the, well, go ahead and talk Yeah, well, about if you that. get damaged. We also have to talk about the hormones as well. Yeah, exactly. Right? We're going to get, yeah, because that's this is all part of it. And uh, we'll also answer some of these in the questions that have already come in today, which we'll be answering later. But yeah, C60 does causes apoptosis of senescent cells. Those are cells which shorten telomeres. They can't reproduce anymore. They're, they've probably gone in the fermentation stage and they're just drawing lots of energy from the body and producing nothing for the body. Well, when the C60 gets in there, it reactivates the mitochondria. The mitochondria send little messages out to the cellular DNA. And if they don't get the right ones back saying we're functional, then the, the mitochondria initiate apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, and the cell breaks down in these little apoptotic bodies, and this doesn't cause inflammation. It's a non-inflammatory thing. So this is a good thing, right? Yes, and then the and then the macrophages or phagocytes come in there and just clean up the apoptotic bodies and recycle the products. Well, now your cell or tissue has less has less. Uh, cells than it needs. And so it actually sends out messages saying, hey, we need to recruit this. And so it causes a huge increase in stem cells. And then those stem cells go out and replace the missing, the missing organ. Now, the other part of this thing about C60, it comes down to pregnenolone. And pregnenolone has a double benefit on this. And one of the things is pregnenolone is synthesized from LDL cholesterol. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why LDL, as we get older, the mitochondria efficiency goes down because they don't have the antioxidants they need to run like SOD and catalase. And, and so that causes, of course, you know, you, you causes a buildup of LDL because that should be being converted to pregnenolone, which is the precursor molecule for all the hormones. So, and when it builds up, it oxidizes. Yeah, that's right. The longer it's hanging around, the longer, the higher chance it has of oxidizing. Well, if it's, it's being made by your body and then it immediately goes into, uh, into production to pregnenolone, well, then you don't get the oxidative buildup. You don't get the oxidation of the LDL because it's being used. It's not just sitting around building up, having the, a chance to be done. So that actually drops LDL cholesterol levels because they're now going to pregnenolone. But of course, when you get pregnenolone, that's the precursor hormone for all the, for, well, precursor molecule for all the hormones. So now your body starts producing the hormones it needs to, and, it, and it's everywhere. It's if you're, it's your pineal gland, you know, it's you're producing melatonin your pituitary okay. gland, you're, you've got, uh, you're getting the sure. human growth hormone and a dozen other super key hormones that run your body, your, the thyroid, your, uh, your adrenals, I mean, your gonads, all the glands in your body which produce hormones can now start producing the hormones at a much higher level when they were used when you were younger, which of course definitely increases your body health. And uh, the LDL cholesterol, the quote, bad cholesterol goes down and it's out of your system before it has a chance to oxidize and stick on your artery walls and start causing plaques. Absolutely. And I wanna say one more thing about stem cells because you kind of jumped to the hormone thing. Um, the stem cell part is really important. And what he explained there, that whole process of adaptosis or whatever you said, all that scientific mm -hmm. stuff, what I wanted to interject there, but didn't, I'm trying not to interrupt you, <laughs> is that it's basically like hitting the refresh button on your cells. So it's like you're getting all these new cells and not only that, it's signaling to your body to make more stem cells. Well, stem cells, you know, you need stem cells to make gut cells, immune cells, uh, tissue of your different organs. So what with, with the increase of stem cells, it's almost like you're reversing aging, you're reversing time, you're able to repair tissues that, you know, normally they don't think is possible in the in the allopathic medical community to do. But people are finding their liver is getting repaired, their kidneys are getting repaired, the thyroid is getting repaired. And also the heart muscle, the damage of the heart muscle can also um, help be repaired with increased stem cell production. Yeah, and it also does the nerve cells because like my macular degeneration went away and uh, the actual, the, yes. the retina of the eye is an extension of the brain. And the nerve brain cells. cells. Yes, the brain, brain cells, cells too. everywhere. I mean, it's so, like, <laughs> we all need more brain amazing. cells. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, as much as, you, as much as you can eat the perfect diet and have the perfect lifestyle, Nobody does. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone does. So, uh, and even if you did, you still would be exposed to oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
Anyway, I want to just say here real quick that C60 Purple Power is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just one teaspoon a day. It's really easy to take. It's an oil. Uh, I just take it in the morning, wash it down with some lemon water, and that's all I have to do. And so it's, I, I mean, it's just such a game changer yeah. with health. And so. they're healthy oils too. They got that omega-3, omega-6 balance that's good for you. Yeah, we've got avocado oil. We've got olive oil. We've got uh, MCT coconut oil, all organic and all anti-inflammatory, by the way. But another thing about the hormones. So there are hormones like stress hormones. Certain hormones are actually inflammatory. Yes. So do you want to talk well, about the stress hormones? Well, it's avoiding. Yeah. I mean, there's cortisol and also in short term stress, you got adrenaline and all that, that stuff. And, and well, part of that is the problem with that, especially if you're older, is uh, you don't, you're not producing a lot of pregnenolone to begin with, right? And then if you're under a whole lot of stress, you're all the pregnenolone is going to use those stress hormones, which means there's not enough for all the rest of the organs, you know, for the rest of it to work. And so you now you, your androgens drop, your human growth hormone drop, your thyroid drops, everything drops because it's all being used up by the adrenals to, to produce, uh, you know, cortisol or some other stress related hormone. And that cortisol is inflammatory. Yes, it is. And so mm -hmm. you want to, uh, yeah, but of course, and I want to say something, C60 doesn't heal anything. What C60 does, it lifts the oxidative burden your cells are under so they can function the way that they used to when you were younger. And once your cells function the way they used to when you're younger, well, then you return to a much better health. I like to share a testimonial at this okay. point. Um, now, we don't get a lot of people talking about heart health because it's one of those things where, uh, oh, I didn't have a heart attack. C60 must be not... C60 must be working. Well, you don't get testimonials like yeah. that, right? So, <laughs> but we have heard other great testimonials. This one is from Donna. She says, next month, I will be 81 years old. I started taking C60 Purple Power about a year ago. At that time, I was taking one medication for joint pain and also one for irregular heartbeat. I no longer take either one as both problems are gone. I have to say that overall, I feel younger each year rather than older. I still ride my bike, usually for four or five miles when I ride it and walk up at about three miles per hour. That's fast. Mm -hmm. That is. She's doing pretty good. And if you'd like to share your story, it is so beneficial to the C60 community. We would love to hear it. You can call and leave a voicemail at 1-800-367-8209, or you can leave us a written testimonial at c60purplepower.com forward slash testimonial. You can share your picture. You can share a video if you want to do that. We would love to hear about it. And you can tag us on social as well, yes. which is uh, at c 60 Purple Power. Uh, and then also, we just want to remind you that you get a 10% off discount code just for being a fan of the show and uh, you, the C60 show. Uh, the code, the C60 show, will give you 10% off your entire order at c60purplepower.com. Yep. Well, I think it's time for our questions and answers. This is, you know, we have some good questions today that happen to be very relevant to our topic. So let's just dive right in here. And I'm so glad that the alarm hasn't gone off yes. yet. So we're <laughs> still waiting. Crossing our fingers. Um, let's see. Let's start with this one from Andrea. And this is an email question from her email. Uh, will C60 be enough to repair the damage to my arteries from long standing degra degradation from inflammation? Well, one of the things is C60 is going to, as it reduces your inflammation, it's going to, and reduces your LDL cholesterol levels, it's going to start slowing that down, that process down. And, uh, and, and yes, your body can actually heal and repair itself. Now, C60 is not the only thing you need to do. You need to do, like, eat the Mediterranean diet, anti-inflammatory, uh, get the exercise and all those other things you do. But, yes, over time, it probably can, can definitely help because people do come back from uh, that. And uh, C60 is just one helper, but you got to do all the other things to move in that direction. It doesn't have to be Mediterranean. Yeah. You could do the Japanese diet. It's also anti-inflammatory. Yes. Some people can have nightshades. So yes. You know. um, all right. The next question is: I have just been diagnosed with shingles. Can applying C60 directly on the sores, as well as taking C60 each morning, help in any way? We have a lot of uh, testimonials from customers that they apply C60 topically to shingles and other inflammations, and it really helps in reducing them. 
So yeah, there's there's a lot of people have come back and said, yeah, oh, it's, it was just so bad. And I is I, that a virus? A shingles, uh, shingles yeah. It's usually a yeah. re. It's not always, but it's usually a reactivation of the chickenpox mm-hmm. virus, which oh. then comes out. Well, if you take C60, it strengthens the immune system, so now your body can fight the shingles virus off or the chickenpox virus off more, and also it also gets mm-hmm. reduces inflammation. So when it does surface. The, uh, the inflammation caused by it is much less. And there's some promising research studies around viruses and how C60 can help um, basically stop them from replicating and things like that. If you go to c60purplepower.com forward slash research and look under the immunity section, uh, there's some interesting studies there. Yes. And there's other viruses like Epstein-Barr and chicken box. These are retroviruses. They're DNA viruses. And there's, there's other nutritions you can take that uh, that can help you with, but there's lots. There's books out there mm-hmm. by you know professional medical doctors who've done uh, lots of research on it with actual patients, right? Not just in the lab, and so they can give you some really good advice on how to do that. What is the reason people on blood thin- thinners should not take C60? Well, one of the things is well, it's it's the pregnenolone. We take C60, your mitochondria go back into full function. They're making pregnenolone. And basically it's the mineral corticoids in your adrenals, which, and to a certain extent, things from your thyroid and your, uh, and your pituitary gland, which control blood, the thick blood thickness. And so what happens is if you're taking a, a medicine to prevent, to thin out your blood, and all of a sudden your adrenals kick in and they're starting to produce the mineral corticoids and the other other hormones, which actually control the thickness of the blood, they're going to, their C60 would drive that toward homeostasis, which means your blood is going to go to where it should be. And then if you're taking blood thinners, then your blood will get too thin and then that causes problems. So if you're taking a blood thinner and you want to take C60, you need to like consult with your doctor and make sure you're getting enough tests so that your blood doesn't get too thin. And if your blood gets too thin, then it can cause problems too. How often do you think they should get a test? Uh, you should consult, yeah. consult your medical yeah. professional, okay. but I think often. Yeah. Because it, it, it can change it very, we found C60 will change it very, very rapidly. People's, mm. people's blood thickness to back toward a healthier level. And so if you're taking a blood thinner, make sure you consult with your doctor. All right. Um, Yolanda from Facebook says, how does C60 interact with the COVID vaccine? Well, we really don't have any information on that. Obviously, 60 is an anti-inflammatory. So if there's inflammation caused by it, it will, uh, it'll probably reduce that inflammation. Uh, of course, a lot of the, we don't really want to, because of censorship, we can't really talk yeah. about that stuff very much. And uh, so actually, I would go to other people on the net who actually <laughs> do talk about that to really find out because- Such a new virus. Yes. Yeah, well, it's an yeah. M- MRA vaccine mRNA. mrna vaccine is not, it's not a vaccine it's a uh, it's gene therapy and so you're dealing with gene therapy which is you know changing the ribosome structure so that's something that you need whole to learn, topic. yeah a whole other topic and you need to research that on yourself because we can't really talk about it that's true uh let's see simply human says us Ins- insulin resistance starts as soon as we consume refined grains and rancid seed oils. Oh yeah, that's definitely yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, for Ken, oral chelation. How does C sixty help with heart failure and increase an in ejection fraction? I'm not sure what the oral chelation. Uh, well, is. oral chelation. Well, it's uh, that's some binding up minerals, mm-hmm. uh, the calcium, you know, because they say. But well, first off, you want to get rid of the plaque before the calcium stick to it, because you need calcium, right? And so that's it's not the calcium building up on your plaque; it's the plaque itself. You need to reduce that. Of course, part of C60 is also good oral health. When you take C60, swish it around, it uh, it seems to strengthen the healthy bacteria. People say, "Oh, my gums got so much better after I've been doing that." Well, there, there you go. You just got one thing. Yes. It got rid of the inflammation in your in your gums, and also another thing, it gets rid of inflammation in your gut because if you've got inflammation in your gut, it's going to cause it it will cause you know oxidative radicals, which then can oxidize the LDL cholesterol, which then the LDL cholesterol will deposit on your arteries and then be attacked by your immune system, which will cause more inflammation. So the whole thing is to start, stop it before it starts and C60 helps you in that kind of that direction. I used to have receding gums and I don't have them anymore. So it does really help. Uh, it might even help with the tartar, but I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Freedom Lover says, can't you get too many antioxidants? Would too many antioxidants actually interfere with the Krebs cycle? Oh yeah. Antioxidants. Yeah. Well, it's, it, they, they, 
probably probably wouldn't interfere too much with the Krebs cycle. If you have too much antioxidants, they're going to interfere with the uh, signaling molecules between the cells. Like if you're taking huge, no, not C60. C60 doesn't interfere. It only interacts with high energy oxidative radicals, which the body doesn't use as signaling molecules. So like the nitrogen oxides, if you take vitamin D or vitamin E, they're going to start messing with the nitrogen oxides. Yeah. They're going to start messing with the other ones, some lower energy oxidative radicals that are based on iron, sulfur, and zinc that your body uses as signaling molecules. Because you can't have too many reactive oxidative species or too little. There is, there's kind of like a balance there, but only of certain types. But the high energy ones like superoxygen, the hydroxyl radical, and peroxynitrate, your body doesn't use those for signaling molecules. It doesn't need them. This is interesting. We have someone on YouTube saying, I switched with C60 for three months and healed a 40-year-old crack and healed 40-year-old cracks in my front teeth. Oh, that's that's possible. I mean, because wow. your teeth are still alive and they, they have, you know, cells in there that can 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 actually work and heal things. Uh, another one is, I guess this is a testimonial we received yesterday. Anna says, I'm taking less Adderall now, thanks to C60 Purple Power. She's age 30. And then Jamie says, C60 Purple Power is helping with my chronic constip- constipation. Um, well, it's, it's, I mean, it, it, it's... That's, that's part of, you know, C60's magic is, you know, it's what it does, it lifts the oxidative burden your cells are under, and then the cells can heal themselves. And I mean, the body has the capacity to heal itself, but as we get older, oh, there's just all kinds of things, you know, the buildup of toxins, there's genetic reasons and all that. And, the decline in yeah. antioxidant production, the decline in hormone production. Yeah. So when you get those back up, then, uh, then you can, you know, your health can return like when you were younger. So it's essentially mm-hmm. kind of rejuvenating you to a younger level. And the decline in stem cell production. Yes, because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's important too. All right. We've got another question from Jaga. Any high, blushers, high blood pressure suggestions? Uh, well, obviously diet. That's the first thing you got to do. It's like you talk to any vet. What's the thing for, the, for what's the best thing for animal health? Diet, diet, diet. So yeah. the first thing you want to do is diet, like cutting out salt. There's a big sure. one. Find salt. Uh, stop the smoking, alcohol levels. But you've talked about how C60 has helped with blood, high blood pressure. And I know that yeah, you've it's, received it, testimonials from people that were able to get off their medication. Yeah, that's that. just basically, I think that's probably has to do with the return of mineral corticoids. And to a certain extent, the glutocorticoids produced by adrenals. Once those hormones, you got the pregnenolone, you're starting to produce the right hormones at the levels that you need. And, and then, you know, the body will just naturally heal itself in that manner. And that's because a lot of people get the pregnenolone stool as you get older. You're under so much stress. You've got to meet deadlines or craziness that's going on now. And, you know, your pregnenolone is being used up for stress hormones and you don't have enough left over for all the rest of it. Well, take C60, you know, the, lift the burden off the mitochondria. They can get, you know, the ATP you need. They can get you the pregnenolone you need so your cells just work better. And good health is good cellular health. I think we need to try answering this one again. How does C60 help with heart failure and increase ejection fraction? Oh, yes. Uh, Okay, well, the first thing is, you know, if your heart's pumping, it needs all the muscles need ATP to work. Okay, as you get older, your antioxidants that produced in the cells, these are, you can't supplement for these, produced in the cells go down. And so if the antioxidants go down, the mitochondria have to turn themselves down to a lower level of metabolism. Otherwise, they'll just destroy themselves. They have sol- they're like little organelles. They got their own DNA. They're, self re- they're self-regulating. And so once you take C60, the C- uh, C60 is actively uptaken by the mitochondria. They use it, of course, to neutralize super oxygen and the hydroxyl radicals and other things. To uh, So now that they can run, uh, they can boost back up into high production of ATP. And now you have the energy in your cell, in your muscle cells, in your heart to do, you know, the contractions. And also you've got the pregnenolone, which is making the various hormones, which are necessary for good health. So you got those two things right there. And that's huge. And of course, C60 is also doing the reducing the inflammation because that's what's really good at. It's an antioxidant, reducing the inflammation, which is causing the heartaches. And that's one of the problems we, I think we talked about it earlier, is you can't really use a lot of oxidant, most of the, quote, ox, uh, antioxidants they want to use to fight the oxidative damage, which is damaging your cardiovascular system. Well, they can't really use it because if they go to really, really high levels, it actually destroys the signaling molecule and cause other really serious health problems. 
And, but C60 doesn't do that. C60 doesn't interfere with the signaling molecules. So you can take C60 at levels and get rid of that inflammation. So you stop the inflammation. And once you stop the inflammation, then the body can start healing itself. If you can't stop the inflammation, then the body can't heal itself. And that's what's really important. And the mitochondria get much more efficient. So you actually feel an increase in energy level. And what was the other half of that question? Oh. Uh, how And then... Increase, how does C60 increase ejection fraction? That's, I think we talked about that. What was the early part of it? How does C60 help with heart failure? Yeah, well, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's basically, yeah, I guess we covered it. It's the main thing is, you know, you get your ATP back up, you get your, your hormone levels back up, you get rid of the inflammation, you increase the stem cells. So if there's damage in the heart, then you've got stem cells to actually go in there and repair it. And of course, also C60 strengthens the nerve cells. So the nerve cells, which actually are, you know, causing the contractions of the heart, which are at least regulating it, they're going to be functioning at a high level. So everything just goes back to a much better level of functioning than it was before. And that's essentially the thing because C60 doesn't heal anything. C60 just lifts the oxidative burden that your cells are under. And once the oxidative burden is gone, then the cells can operate the way they're supposed to and do whatever job that they're meant to do. Absolutely. Um, now, here's a question I think I'm going to try answering. Okay. Actually, I'm going to answer because I know the answer. <laughs> um, Christopher says, my skin is glowing since I started taking C60. How does that work? Okay. Well, number one, gut health. We know that gut health directly affects your skin health. Uh, and C60, because it increases stem cells, helps with the production of gut cells. Well, that actually helps, you know, with problems like leaky gut and things like that. They can help repair the damage to the gut lining, which will help your skin. But also, those stem cells also produce skin cells. And as you age, the, turn, the skin cell turnover rate slows down. Your skin gets thinner, and then you get the wrinkles and the crepey, thin skin. Uh, so when you take C60, it replenishes those stem cells, replenishes those skin cells, and that skin cell turnover rate speeds up again. So you do look and feel younger. Yes. And I think that's, I think that might be all the questions that we have for today. No, we, we have a follow-up comment to the teeth cracks from uh, someone on YouTube. She says, it caused my teeth to self-repair cracks that I had for 40 years and went from to went from to back in my front teeth through and through. Oh, the cracks went from, wow, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, so yeah, because, well, you know, there's cells, your tooth has enamel, but on the inside, there's cells in there. Just like bone, inside your bone, there's cells that are breaking bone down and building bone up. Well, if you get your cells start functioning again, they can recognize, you know, damage in the tooth because that's what they're designed to do. And they go in there and deposit calcium and uh, phosphorus. There's a whole little way it makes the tooth enamel. And uh, yeah, it can actually fix itself. So that's, that's entirely possible. So I just got a comment from Simply Human um, saying that potassium, higher, more potassium can help with high blood pressure. Yes. Well, yeah, you have to be careful on potassium though, because it, that, a lot of times, yeah, but potass, too high potassium can cause a heart attack. So, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, and that's a problem. Well, that usually has to do with kidney problems because like when your kidneys you know, they've been designed like, for instance, 99% of the sodium is going to be reabsorbed into the body. That's the way the kidney, the kidneys, and then like 88% of the potassium of the potassium is being reabsorbed, but the rest, you know, 12%, well, if your kidneys don't work, then you get a real high buildup of potassium and it can be a problem. So if you're taking potassium, like those potassium, you got to be you've got to be careful that you don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. uh, basically just trying to eat a really healthy diet and uh, is, is the key. And, uh, you know, potassium, bananas have potassium in them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's various, so they are a little fattening, but uh, there's, there's good sources of natural potassium. And, and that's also things, there's things like they, want, they had that thing where they wanted everybody to take cal coral calcium, mm -hmm. right? So you can't, your body cannot process coral <laughs> calcium. It's, it's not possible. You, if you want to get calcium to go in your body, you need to have that calcium in some sort of organic uh, molecule that's found in, let's say, green leafy vegetables or cheese or some other, you know, organic substance. Your body can't absorb basic chemicals. That's what plants do. Plants take, absorb basic chemicals, build them up into carbohydrates and protein complexes with those chemicals built in. Then you eat those things and then your body's digestive system pulls them out of that organic molecules. But you can't 
really take, uh, you can't really absorb elemental elements. That's just, you know, that's just not going to happen. But what you can do is stop eating things that leach the calcium from your body, like but uh, inflammatory well, foods. Yeah, basically. yeah. Well, fatty foods. Coffee. Yeah, maybe. coffee. Some of those things. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like anything else. If anything in excess, alcohol, mm -hmm. that's a really nasty. Cigarette smoking, that's the worst. Well, it's like I think it has to do with the pH of your body. So yeah. if if you're super acid, your body will start leaching calcium from your bones to make you more alkaline. So if you eat an alkalizing diet. Uh, you know, with lots of fresh, colorful fruits and vegetables, then that won't happen. And yes. you may not need to take as much calcium. Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it comes down to really, to, the number one key to health is good diet. Yes. And of course, you throw a little exercise <laughs> Back, on yeah. there, those healthy lifestyle choices and avoid, you know, nobody can avoid everything and all the toxins in our environment. But, you know, to the best you can, you know, eat organic and get the exercise and just do the best you can. Yep, absolutely. And, and then, you know, because... You're not perfect, and I'm not perfect. Yeah, so, None of us are perfect. Yes. Take a little C60. One teaspoon a day is perfect for me. I don't know about you. Well, like it's, one it's, it's on uh, size. Yeah, you know, as you get, if you're bigger or you're older, you need more C60. But as you can see, there's just so many health benefits that don't necessarily come from that bottle. They come from you, but it you know mm -hmm. helps your body yeah, your heal body. itself. Yes. Uh, Traveler says, is there a toxic level of C60? Well, they've actually, they gave rats 10,000 times what like a person would be taking. 10,000 times. That's like a gram per kilogram, right? C60 works pretty good at 0 0.1 grams per kilogram. Uh, that's, you know, that's pretty low. 0 0.1, yeah, it's pretty low. So that's 10,000 times, you know, that what you'd normally be taking. There were no really no toxic effects in, in that study, which is just, astounding because if you did that with any other oxidant, antioxidant like vitamin D or vitamin E, that would be fatal. But mm -hmm. with C60, there doesn't appear to be any level of toxic. Now you're going to have some other side effects like you're going to be really, it's, it has a stimulated effect. So you're probably going to have problems sleeping and, uh, but you'll be healthy, but you'll, you'll have problems sleeping. So, but at any, you know, amount that a person could take, you're not going to be getting any levels of toxic C60, at least from scientific studies, you know, 10,000 times you'd have to be, take, you'd be taking basically four liters of, uh, of oils a day. And I don't think anybody's no. digestive system could handle that. Oil. That would go right through you. Yes. <laughs> so you wouldn't get that. We actually did a short video. It's uh, like 10 minutes long, all about is C60 safe? So you should definitely go check that one out because we go deep into the research around that. Uh, but I think that is all the questions that we have for today. Uh, Rex says hi, by the way. Oh, hi, Rex. Hi, Rex. <laughs> so glad you're here. Um, well, I think we should go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed our show, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you're watching us after the show already aired live, let us know in the comments if you have any questions because we love to check those comments and answer your yes. questions. And if you'd like to try C60 for yourself, visit c60purplepower.com. And remember to use the coupon code the C60 show for 10% off. If you're watching us on YouTube today, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon so that you get a notification every time we upload something new. Oh, and thanks everyone for your questions. And we're looking forward to the next show. And don't, for quit, don't forget to click like on our videos as well. Yeah, share them with your friends. Um, yeah, have a happy Valentine's Day, everyone. We'll see you next time.